Hello and welcome to the seventh video in our series on scientific writing. In the previous video, we finished our discussion of the action. In this video, we will discuss the resolution. Recall that in the resolution, you discuss what you learnt. You answer the question, how has the larger problem that you posed in the opening changed as a result of your work? A good resolution does two things. It shows how our understanding of nature has advanced. And it wraps up the story by offering new insights into the problem identified in the opening. So how do we transition from the action to the resolution? After presenting your results in the action, you should discuss the implication of those results on the specific question you posed in the challenge. This discussion should then blend into a discussion of the implications on the larger problem you posed in the opening. So how wide should the resolution be? As wide as the opening. Remember that a resolution narrower than the opening will have you overpromising and your readers will feel cheated. A resolution wider than the opening will have you underpromising. Your readers won't ever see that you're telling a story that would interest them. But a resolution as wide as the opening is right on target and your readers will be satisfied. When writing your resolution, there are a couple of possible approaches. The most common is to identify a result and explain its significance. So let's look at an example. The result is, we introduced the drop conjecture and illustrated its accuracy for a variety of examples. We then used drop to probe superradiance in multidimensional quantum networks. And then we explained the significance. While other methods can provide some numerical information on the collective decay rates of small networks, our main results are derived from the analyticity that accompanies the drop conjecture and apply to multidimensional networks of arbitrarily large sizes. But sometimes, the most important thing you discover is a new question. If this is the case, be sure to make the question concrete. Be clear how the question grew from your work. Make clear that it's not that you failed to fill a knowledge gap, but that you identified a new one. When it comes to the resolution, there are two possible ways to fail. The first leads to a weak resolution. Weak resolutions synopsize results and say that they are important, but don't clarify how, and they don't answer the questions they were asking. The second leads to distracting resolutions. Distracting resolutions conclude with distracting material that should be in the introduction, or material that is already in textbooks. Here is an example of a weak resolution. We expect DROP to be useful for designing complex quantum networks for future quantum technologies. Sure, it says it's important, but it doesn't say how. Here is an example of a stronger resolution. As collective decay rates are linked to time evolution in waveguide QED, it is possible that the dimensional reduction produced by DROP could be present in time-evolved systems as well. Due to their potential for studying multidimensional networks and their time evolution, we expect DROP to be useful for designing complex quantum networks for future quantum technologies. Here the example explains how it's important. And then there is the worst possible way to fail, to undermine your conclusions. Many papers do end with more research is needed to clarify our findings. Humility is good and uncertainties remain, but the resolution is not the place to discuss them. Here is an example of us undermining our conclusions. The drop conjecture opens the door for investigating multidimensional networks via their collective decay rates. However, finding the scattering parameters efficiently in a large quantum network is still an open and important question. So here we say that drop is great, and then we say more stuff needs to be done. There's a better way to do this. While finding the scattering parameters efficiently in a large quantum network is still an open and important question, the drop conjecture opens the door for investigating multidimensional networks via their collective decay rates. This says the same thing, but strongly and positively. OK, and now it's your turn for an exercise. I'd like you to flesh out the answers to the question, how has the larger problem from the opening changed as a result of your work, into a couple of paragraphs. In doing so, you will write the closing paragraphs of your paper or essay. As we've been doing so far, focus on structure. The writing does not need to be perfect and we will do more editing later. Start of narrow and then get broader. Clarify how your results are important. Don't include anything but that new insight. And don't undermine your conclusions. Now is a good time to pause the video to work on the exercise. 
and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. Okay, I hope you've had some time to work on the exercise. If things didn't go according to plan, I have some extra tips for how to fix a bad resolution. First, trim away the dead tissue. That is the fluff, the detractions, the new ideas. When those things are important, move them elsewhere. And the second is to condense your resolution to do three things. First, to give a brief summary. Second, show how your results answer your question. And third, show what this contributes to solving the larger problem. Okay, let's summarize what we've seen in this video. In the resolution, you explain how the larger problem from the opening has changed as a result of your work. The resolution should be as wide as the opening. Sometimes the most important thing you discover is a new question and don't undermine your conclusions. And finally, remember that last words are so powerful. People will accept whatever you put there as the take home message. So it's really important that you don't blow the punchline. So now the resolution is done and we've made it to the end. Or have we? This whole time, we've been discussing structure at the level of the entire document, but a paper or thesis also has internal structure. This is what we will discuss in the next video. See you next time.